Hey, producer here. For today's episode, we're flipping the script and sharing an episode where Kayla is the guest on the show, Nobody Cares. Listen in as the host Andre asks her what it took to go from working night shift as a nurse to becoming the successful real estate investor she is today. This episode is so real and goes into everything from birth stories to choosing the right business partner and why you must run your business with integrity. Enjoy this interview of Kayla on Nobody Cares. All right, we are here and we are live with Nobody Cares, as you know, and I'm here with the infamous, infamous Kayla Craft. <laughs> Say hello to the viewers. Hi, I'm excited to be here. This is cool. I'm happy Nobody you're cares on here. that no, we're on no, here. <laughs> nobody cares I'm that here. you're on here. But we're going to put you on and see what happens. Um, so we met about five years ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's what I sort of remember. You coming into the studio that I own called Box House in Newport Beach, and you were new to the area, mm -hmm. originally from? Bakersfield. Bakersfield, yeah. okay, so the armpit Bakersfield. Armpit of California. Yeah, armpit. What else is in the armpit? <laughs> it was just me and I left you. it. So. You came down here and you're like, hey, sign up for some boxing classes. You well, like so I, like, I lived right in Corona Del Mar okay. and so you know you get off the 73 and you see Box House right there yeah. and it was just opening up. So, I mean, what a great location, right? You. And I was like, Working wow. out, like I mm -hmm. am a like fitness yeah. fanatic, mm -hmm. so I was like, I have to get my gym thing get like figured out yeah. ASAP. And you guys had just opened, yeah. so I got like a membership or whatever yeah. it was at the time. Boom! Started yep. taking classes, started getting it going. <clears throat> You're such a people person, so yeah. it was like, you, I just you, were like, you, you who just can I talk to? Who will talk to me? Smile. <laughs> I, I need I'm friends. that type of person. Yeah. Yes, you are. But someone like yourself <laughs> with your personality, it's, like, it's not hard to find friends, make friends. Yeah. But I want to talk about that because we're adults. I know. It's harder to make friends. That's a story that people tell themselves. Okay, so okay. let's talk. Let's dive into that a little bit. How did you outside like of saying, if you have the story that mm -hmm, I am a good person mm -hmm. and people like me and mm -hmm. I attract good people into my life, then yes. that's what you get, Ooh. right? So I like knew I'm like okay, this is a beautiful place. Beautiful people live here. Mm -hmm. I want to meet all the awesome people. So I also met Vanessa by just like reaching out to her. I'm like, hey, I saw yeah. that you like are. I think she owned like Ekam Pilates yep. at the time, mm -hmm. like just that mm -hmm. one and Box House. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can we go to, co to coffee? And yes. she was like, sure. Yes. And like we just met and mm -hmm. like hit it off and just talked yeah. synergies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then it was like she's an instant friend, right? And I did that with so many other people that I just like looked at and I'm like, okay, I know this that they're this my type of person. Yeah, that's my tribe. But I have that belief that like everything happens for me. Like all the right people right. are placed in my life mm -hmm. for such a time as this. Ooh. You have to like your beliefs are everything. You know. What type of energy do you put out there? It sounds like you put out some positive, good stuff. I Normally, I put out good yeah, energy. Right. I mean, and, and sometimes like I have my moments where it's negative, but yeah. but like especially like when I moved here, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm all my people are here. Where are they? You know. And sometimes, yeah, I get in a mood where people suck, but. Where people suck, and people freaking suck. They do, like, and you, you're you in the people business. I mean, oh we're all gosh. in the people business, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. you know, like, oh, I want to cancel my membership, and yeah, th yeah. those people are like. But I tell them, I'm like, you annoyed. suck, and then I hang up. <laughs> yeah, it gets annoying, you know? Yeah, so. it does. Yeah. So you get to Box House, you link okay. it with my partner, you start doing your thing, you start building friendships, you start building a community for yourself, within yourself, but you're also an entrepreneur. Yes. You're also a mother, a wife. Mm -hmm. You wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. I want to go into motherhood. Just touch on it a little bit. You have three. You're so good at interviewing. Aww. I'm so proud of you. Oh, okay. thank you. I appreciate that. See? <laughs> um, so we have three. Okay. I want names. I want ages. Okay. So Cooper is 13. Mm -hmm. And then Charlie, my girl, is mm -hmm. 10. And then Channing is 8, who's a boy. Okay. And um, they are the loves of my life. Yes, they are. And I'm obsessed with them. But they're not babies anymore. And so it's like I'm learning yeah. how to be a mom to a teenager. And that doesn't want me to call him baby anymore. Ugh. You know, that doesn't cuddle with me that anymore. Feel? It's heartbreaking. But then at the same time, yeah. it's like <clears throat> this is yeah. what's supposed to happen. Right, right. He's supposed to be an independent right. man, you right. know. So right. it's amazing to see him, like, become that guy. Yeah. Um, so it's fun. It's every season is fun. Yeah. But I mean, and this season is like not as hard as mm -hmm. where you're at right now with We're like all, little ones and stuff. I am. I'm in a different place right yeah. now. I'm in the shit right now. But with, with the pregnancy, one, two, three, were they all the same? Were they all different? Let's talk about the first one. Just touch on it. Okay. If you remember. No, I do remember okay, because you told me you're gonna ask all me right. about this. So That's I was like, right. oh. So it's funny. Like I was in nursing school and I got pregnant for the first time and okay. I miscarried. Okay. And then you know you're expected to just like get back into life. Back on the horse. Yeah. 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 And I take finals like to be done with nursing school like the next week, 
And then I was like, you know, grieving and I wanted to get pregnant right away, even though that wasn't our plan, right. like to have kids. Okay. But I was like, I want to, like, I was sad. Yeah. So anyways, I got pregnant like pretty soon right okay. after. You're not supposed to, but yeah. we did. Mm -hmm. And then I had a baby like at 20, I was 22 when he was born. So um, it's like, That's woo, a, I was a baby wild. having a baby. I was like pounding beers in college, playing football and you're over here having a baby. Yeah. yeah. We were not the same. Yeah. yeah. But so I worked night shift as a nurse <clears throat> okay. while I was pregnant with him and I would get nosebleeds all the time. And it was just, it was a hard pregnancy because I was doing night shift. Like I was like not on the so right. So you're stressing on the body. Yes. Not enough, yeah. probably not enough sleep. Exactly. You're also studying and all. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, uh, he was two weeks late, okay. which is so scary because it's like, you're not supposed to really go over late because mm. the placenta can stop like producing good nutrients. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So what I found out, it was crazy town. Like the doctor shouldn't have like let me go mm -hmm, over mm -hmm. that late. They should have induced and, you probably. Yeah. Right? right. But like, apparently my doctor was like losing his mind at the time. Stop. Legit. Like he got his license taken away and none of us like all, the, it, this was like the doctor to go to in the armpit of California. Okay. And <laughs> he I lost his mind cause he lives in the armpit of <laughs> California. But plus I'm also like a nurse and yeah. like, I know, oh, yeah. I know enough, like, yeah. okay, like, you know, it's okay to be a little late, but like not right. this late. So I finally go in and I say like, I think you should induce me. And he was like, okay, come in tomorrow morning. We'll induce you. the boss just, we'll just, Yeah. So. You're calling the shots now? <laughs> exactly. And so like that night before I was to get induced, yeah. I, this is like kind of like, you want me to really be do TMI? It, do it. I'm here for it. They're I here know. for it. Let's go. Nobody cares, but Nobody I'm going to share it anyway. Anyways. Yep. Talk to me. <laughs> so like I wake up and I'm feeling like a contraction and all of a sudden like there's just blood gushing everywhere. And the nurse in me, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I still get chills because it yeah. was so scary. I'm like, oh my gosh. Start losing the baby? Yes. And I, I call Chase and like he's in yeah. bed, you know, I'm yep. like, call the ambulance. Well, we lived in a brand new house, mm -hmm. new construction. Mm -hmm. The ambulance couldn't find our house. So oh, Chase gets me in the no. car and I'm like, again, like bleeding everywhere. And like, I'm like, just praying. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I just need to feel Cooper move. Like, Were you starting to feel flushed? Like, yes. Like, oh yeah. Pass out? I yeah, was like losing, yeah, like, it, was, blood, yeah. it was so scary. Mm -hmm. And Chase just like takes off in our little car at the time. And he's just like going over dirt roads and trying to get me to the ER. And it was so crazy. As soon as we like pulled into the ambulance bay, I heard, I mean, I felt Cooper kick. Oh, okay. So that's. And so I was like, oh my gosh, thank God. Like okay. he's alive, okay. you know? And then because I'm a nurse, I know so many people at this hospital mm. and they're right there, like Boom. getting me in. Let's go. Yeah. Like, and Priority. everything was fine. You know, um, mm -hmm. it ended up yeah. 13 hours later he came. So okay. he was basically, I have this condition where my cervix bleeds mm -hmm. when I go into labor. Okay. So every time it's like a trauma scene and you don't know when it's like, instead of my water breaking, my blood breaks yeah, yeah. everywhere. So that's fun. <laughs> it's very like high stress with all three kids, you know? So the second one. What, what, the second one, like same thing, like blood everywhere. And it was great. And <laughs> 18 hours later, she came. And then the third one. And then the third one, same thing. Yeah, at this um, point where you're like, I know what's going to happen. Yep. Don't freak out. But we do need to get to the DM hospital. Yeah. 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 And then they come and it's amazing and it's beautiful. <sighs> How did the but, kid, the older, take to the, the baby? He initially? was always like. Like, I feel like, I don't know if you see this with like mm -hmm. your oldest, but they're like nurturers. They want yes. to take care. It's like yes. that older, you know, older sibling. Type I think of vibe. that's that we, we see that because my wife and I, we're very nurturing. We're very, hey, what do you need? Do you need help? Kind of that. Yeah. That's, but I see her embody that. And then with my son, Andre, she'll be like, no, Andre, that's dangerous. And Aww, I'm like, yes. she's a little mama bear. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. I see that's the same how my thing. oldest one was, you know, and he's still like that. I and mean, he's 13 and he's telling everybody what to do. So it's so cute. I love him. He's the amazing. apple does not fall far from the tree, mm -hmm. my friend. Mm -hmm. I know. He's like, I'm going to have daddy billionaire one day. So Ooh. He's very, you already took the domain? Yeah. Bought I, it? I should. I, I need to do that before this goes. Done live. deal. Right? But yeah. Yeah. I want to go into, so you got a couple kids. It's all good. The entrepreneurship of Kayla Crab. When did that even like, I've always been entrepreneurial spirited. I've always had that in me. Yeah. I've always had the fighter in me per se. When did that happen for you? Just like, you know, I think I need to work for myself, be for myself, live for myself. When did that come on? Yeah. So it was after um, my first baby Okay. because I was working as a nurse and I loved being a nurse. Right. But then when Cooper came, I was like, this isn't it. Right. Like, I'm not going to do this yeah. 12 hours away. And mm. like, I just, I, I wanted something different for my life. Okay. So I knew what network marketing was mm -hmm. yep. and, uh, huge. Was 
Yeah, I was like, I'm going to get into that, okay. basically. Yep. So I found a good company, because mm -hmm. um, I had dibble dabbled in that when I was like 18. Okay. But I found another company yeah. I wanted to go with, and then that was kind of a whirlwind because I became a millionaire in that company within wow. a couple years, which most people don't do, right? right? Like most people fail in network mm -hmm. marketing, mm -hmm. but I was just like, I was kind of like- Most I, people fail in business in general. Right, but I was yeah. ignorance on fire. Like, yeah. I was Love just it. like, well, oh, next. Mm -hmm. Let's go. go. Yeah, let's go. So I made a million dollars and then I was like, I'm not happy and I don't really like this. Okay. What I'm doing. Like, yeah. I don't like how I made that million right, dollars. Right, right, right. So I was like, I got to figure out a new way, mm -hmm. right? And I knew I liked sales. I knew I liked marketing. I knew mm -hmm. I liked helping people. And networking. And and, yeah. Yep. And so then I was like, I'm going to build a coaching program. Okay. So I got into, you know, coaching people mm -hmm. on their business, mm -hmm. mainly in social media, right. how to grow. And this was like really when like organic, you could really mm -hmm. blow it up. Like, mm -hmm. you know, 2013. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Really touch people organically. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. people didn't understand what a personal brand mm. was, you know? So I really got good at teaching people how to figure out their personal yeah. brand yeah. and display it to the world and impact a lot of people's lives. So Here's the interesting thing. Like, like entrepreneurship is, is, is viewed one way, as you see on social media. It's like, I'm on the plane in a private jet emailing people. It's like, bro, bye. <laughs> Stop it. If I'm on a private jet, you think I got my, my laptop out? I'm chilling. Oh, exactly. Like, come exactly. On. And you're always by yourself with a suit. Get out of here. Beat it. <laughs> But let's they just talk. They rented that jet, yeah. Right, and they rent. It's not even a real jet. For the hour. It's, it's just the just half of a jet. It's like a yeah. section of a jet. Yeah. That's at some, some mall. Yeah. Um, you don't make money in the beginning with any business, and and people think it's like, oh, I turn on a switch and I, I'm a millionaire. It's like. I like to say, like, if you're not willing to work for free, you'll be broke for the rest of your life, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You've got to be willing to put in some sweat equity and not see anything mm -hmm. in return yeah. for a while. Right. Like, how committed are you yeah. to that? And the next question is, well, well, how long? It's like, if you're already counting the days, you're going to miss the hours. You're not for it. Yeah. Go get a job. Yeah. That's, that's fine. I know. Which is fine. Which is fine. Go get a job. That's not everybody fine. is meant to no. be an entrepreneur. No. No. And I think that's where like a lot of people, like they're depressed and they're struggling yeah. Yeah. because they're like, <clears throat> they feel like something's wrong with them, that yeah. they can't be an entrepreneur. I'm like, I think it's very similar to other avenues of life. They see a really cool, fun relationship on Instagram. It's like, bro, that's not it. There's a little bit of argument going on. There's a little bit of difference in going on. You think it's just this love story. That's not it. Same thing, I think, people, how they view entrepreneurship. Private jets. I'm right. in Vegas. I'm doing that. But, like, did you see that guy for five years? You didn't know nothing about him or her. Zero. They weren't making jack shit. Mm -hmm. And you're just, you're seeing the outcome. You're not seeing the journey. And I think Nas said it best. He talked about zero to 60. And I just want to interject real quick because one of my favorite things he talked about, he talked about being, going from zero to 60. And everybody wants to get to 60. But that dash in the middle, that's where it's at. That, it's really about the dash. And mm -hmm. people want to go, extra but I want to go here. It's like, what about this? Mm -hmm. What about, and this is where you grow. Yeah, and then when you get to 60, you're gonna have a new idea. Yeah, and you're so, <laughs> so what's the rush? You're gonna get there. Yeah. But I, I know what the rush is. They want, people want to make money, they want to be successful. It's, that, it's yeah. the survivor in us. Like, yeah. we're fighting, fighting, yeah. fighting, you know? What was your biggest challenge in becoming an entrepreneur and saying, I'm putting my flag in the ground. This is what I want to do. I'm not going to go back the other way. What are some of the challenges you had in the beginning? It, but oh, you're outgoing. You love networking. You have all the things, but there's challenges too. Yeah. So mine was that my identity was so wrapped up in nursing mm. because I, I mean, I wanted to be a nurse since I was 14. Like I got into like a special school. It was in the hood, but, you're, you're. Um, but like I, I grew up with nothing. Okay. So, um, I found out that nurses, there was a shortage, and so you could always have a job. So sure. I was like, okay, I wanna be a nurse. Mm -hmm. And my mom found out about this program where you yeah. could become a nurse like really quickly. So Sorry, like, give me some of those early classes yeah. out of the way. Yep. Yeah, it was like, it was called yeah. Health Careers Academy. So it was like, at 14, I knew I was gonna be oh, a nurse. Sure. And like, you know, that was me. And then I figured out, oh my gosh, like this isn't me anymore. And yeah. so it was like that cognitive dissonance that mm. it, I, ha I had where it was like, I know I don't want to be a nurse, mm -hmm. but then everything in my identity is telling me I'm supposed to be a nurse. Like this is the safe route you're right. supposed to take. This is how you're going to take care of your family. Mm. Because I, I grew up with nothing. So right. I never wanted my family to, to like feel. experience mm. that. And so I'm like, what, what's going to happen? And then at the end of the day, I said, okay, if everything goes away tomorrow, yep. could I build something again? Yes. And the answer was yes, uh, right? You got to bet on you. Yourself, yeah. And so it was, it was that realization, like this, even if everything went away tomorrow, you don't go away. Like your skills don't go away. Mm -hmm. So you could do it again. And I have, so yeah. a couple times. A couple times you've done it. Let's talk about those couple times. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So real quick, I want to talk about a couple times you've done it. We talked about the first business, like, okay, made a million bucks, 
not really the way I wanted to do it, but whatever, I got there. I had a great avenue. I'm sure you had some great mentorship and you learned a lot about mindset, I already know for sure. And you mm -hmm. took that into the other business and did that too as well. The coaching for you, you still do that, correct? Yes. What are some other things that you do? Real estate investing, uh -huh. lending, uh -huh. capital raising mm -hmm. for my syndications, mm -hmm. for my fund. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're busy, to mm -hmm. say the least. Yeah. And I, I, I like am the mom. Like I don't have anybody to help me here. Because yeah. yeah. you know my no, family's no, no. not yeah. here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Is, that, is that hard? Um, yeah, it is hard. I mean, I just have, my mom is, is single still. Yeah. And so I'm mm -hmm. like, it's, she's, well, I don't know. Well, oh, nobody cares. I can say it. Nobody's yeah. watching this anyway. Nobody cares. No, nobody's, nobody's even I, this. Like, so my mom is like the cutest little thing. She's 60 and she thinks okay. like her life is Let's over. Let's plug she your mom in right now. We'll, we'll put a picture up and see if we get a date. Let's get her a man. Let's get her a man. Down here in Orange okay, County. Let, okay. Well, she's 60. What else? She looks like me, but okay. she has dark hair. She's so cute mm -hmm. and I love her. Um, anyways, I want her to live here with me. Okay. So it's like a big like issue between mm -hmm. me and her right. because I want her to be here to help me. What's her hang up over there? Because that's like where she's from. Yeah. She's born and raised there. Yeah. But she's like a single woman. I'm like, come on, come meet come somebody in yeah, the OC yeah. and have fun. Like yes. you still have so much of your life to live, right? right. So anyway, uh, mm -hmm. why did I start telling that story? Well, first of all, I wanted to plug in your mom so we can okay. get her on Tinder and get it going. Jenny. <laughs> hey. Jenny from the block. We're going to put her Is right that her name? Jenny? Jenny, yeah. Jenny from the block. So we're gonna get Jenny from the block down here. That's gonna be, did you have, do you have a timeline when you wanna get your mom down? You're just on the Oh, I've been discussion. begging her for five years. Oh shit. Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's gonna happen. She's just as stubborn as me, so it might be. Are you stubborn? Um, absolutely. What, on, what entrepreneur oh, yeah, do you yeah, yeah, know yeah, yeah, that yeah. is not stubborn? I know you're stubborn. I'm fucking set in my way sometimes, <laughs> man. I'm like turning into my dad and shit sometimes, you know? I'm like stubborn. That's what happens to all of us. We're like, what and I'm like, happened? I'm turning on my mom in some ways, turning on my dad in some ways. People that you, you sort of grew up with. I'm yep. like, dude, I'll, I'll do yep. stuff with my coffee. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> it's my dad. Or I'll, I'll say something to my daughter. I'm like, oh, it's my mom. I don't even like that. Do you have I, dad jokes yet? I'm, I'm, they're getting better. They're getting better. I like them. I think they'll work. <laughs> they work for my daughter now, but I, there's going to come a time where she's going to They're not going to work at Box House. My 9 a.m. class, that might work. Oh, all the moms in That's there? That's the moms, yeah. So, so you know that. I know, I used to go to that yeah, class. Yeah, I know. It's a great class. Yeah. It's still there. It's still packed, still busy as ever. But we got new moms coming, right? They, yeah, These moms fine. are getting pregnant, so they're like, the goal, the ongoing joke at Box House, because, you know, I teach a, a 4 or a 5 p.m., the women in there, they're like, my goal is to get into the 9 a.m. class. It means I have made it. Oh, If that's I cool. can find a man to, to get me right, <laughs> and I can come to a 9 a.m. class, <laughs> drop off the kids, I have officially made it so uh box house is basically turning that into that means a you're not working so, either yeah exactly so <laughs> how do you feel about about working you, you you get the husband he works too or you guys work together how does that work yeah so he's he's tried like a couple things okay. and right now he's doing like hard money lending yep so that's going well for him okay okay yeah. do you guys ever do business together we did we did for like five years how was that it was horrible. Yeah. It like ruined us. Yeah. Like we were yeah. not in a good yeah. spot for a while. Yeah. But then in, when the pandemic happened, yeah. we, we made amends. Yep. And we like, we figured it out. Why do you think relationships like that, business relationships don't work with Because couples? it's really hard to turn it off. It's like, it's really hard to go, okay, I'm no I'm longer. Wife, I'm your business yeah. partner. Yeah. Yeah. It was, just, yeah. I, and I don't have that. I don't have a turn off yeah, button. Yeah. Yeah. A lot I'm of people say like, they can, like, oh, I can separate the two. Like, nah, you really can't. No. You really can't. I know of one couple that can do it really well, mm -hmm. but they're already like very financially like stable. I get what you're saying, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, they're good. Their kids yeah. are older right. Right. and they just, they have freedom. And, and like, that's the goal. Yes. But like, I don't know how to make that work now. Yeah. So. And it's hard to make financial mistakes when you're still building. Yeah. And then you're looking at your partner, they're looking you at time, you like, yeah. hey, this is costing us money. We're not in a position right now where we can really afford to make these mistakes. Mm -hmm. when, like the couple you're talking about, they're like, hey, it messed up, high five, let's go try something yeah. else. That sounds fun. It's not <laughs> the reality of most of us. Even for my wife and I, we don't, we don't do business together per se. We just like, she tells people to go to box house. I tell people to sit down on top of there and she does therapy, you know, for a living. So, but we don't mix mingle and kind of cross pollinate because i'm sure there is something there for us but let's not let's just maybe later maybe later after the kids are older maybe. and we're millionaires yes yeah, exactly so, so you're, you're coaching and you're mentoring a lot of people mm -hmm. is this a daily weekly monthly thing what do you now i have it where i only work about like in my coaching programs mm -hmm. i only do probably about four hours a week 
Okay. Um, just because of the yeah. different programs we have, and okay. I have coaches that work under me okay. that help me okay. with that. Yeah. So that's taken a lot off my plate, and now the majority uh, of my time is in real yeah. estate because mm -hmm. that's what excites me. And How new is real estate to you? It's probably like two years that right. I've been like heavily. Real, yeah. This is my passion. Right. You know. So I just created a whole new brand called Crafted Entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and that's all focused on real estate coaching and mm -hmm. helping people, you know, grow their net worth and oh. become accredited investors. That's incredible. Yeah. In which you enjoy investing, it sounds like. I'm obsessed. I know a couple things. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did do that. She yeah. did. She did. She <laughs> did. I don't want to say that here, but yes. Yeah. You did, and I never said thank you personally, but I want to say thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So. Um, Let's move on. There's more. Mm -hmm. there's yeah, more there's here. a lot. There's, there's a lot, lot more. What are one of the things that you wanted to talk about? Is there any point that you wanted to get across today? To who? To the nobodies? Yeah, to the nobodies. <laughs> to fucking nobody. That want to be gonna, somebody. They, yeah, they need to, they yeah, need to have yeah. a name. I, um, I, I actually have the next thing. So it, it's, it's really what I'm seeing. Uh, where I'm around a lot of moms. There are a lot of women. And they want to mm -hmm. do more. They want to be more. Yeah, yeah. they do. I'm, I'm, I have two kids. I got three kids. I got one kid. Husband, he's a breadwinner. I get all that. Let's just say that's sort of, that's the story I've sort of put together right now. But I want more, Andre. I want, I want to, I, I want to, I want to do. It's always like life. I want to do a business. <laughs> it's like okay, I know you want to do a business. I want to be a part of a business because entrepreneurship, back to what it looks like on social, yeah. looks very glamorous, looks very fun. That's what it is. It's like social media has like ruined it for like I so know, many people. And like your life is freaking good. Like if I yeah. had a husband that like did well like that, I mean. Bye. Yeah. Hello. You know? Yeah. Yeah. All good. Yeah. So what would be your advice to, you know, hey, I'm, I'm 28, 29 years old, I got a couple kids. What well, doesn't even matter the age. Like, I want to start a business from home. What is a good home business? I know MLM is incredible. Yeah, but the works. opportunity has changed. Okay. So when I got into it in 2000. In any MLM? In any MLM. Okay. I really think it has. And okay. I'm going to get some people. Who cares? But. Nobody. Yeah, I think it's just different. Like in 2011, when I first got like going hard, mm -hmm. I mean, I could just post anything on Facebook Boom. and people would buy. Wow. Because it wasn't saturated. Correct. And like you have to understand that the market is saturated right now mm -hmm. with MLMers. Mm -hmm. The pandemic, there was a lot of opportunity. People took it. Yeah. And then like everybody's selling something now. Yeah. Right? Yes. So it's, you can make it if you decide that you're truly going to be an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. you want to like make mm -hmm. your whatever product it is that you're selling, okay. how do you add it and like make sure it's like a luxury thing? So if you're selling like a weight loss supplement, yeah. how do you make it luxury? Well, you're, I'm going to give you health coaching. I'm going to give you this. So I don't uh -huh. go on Amazon and buy a, another protein shake. Like 11 years ago when I was selling protein shakes or 12 years ago, you know, mm -hmm. there, you couldn't go on Amazon to mm -hmm. buy a protein mm -hmm. shake. Yeah. Well, you can go on there now and yeah. find 50. You go on someone's actual website and or you got to go inside the nutrition store, yep. like a GNC yep. or something like that. that so it. the opportunity has changed yeah. and, and it's just like, I mean, people like really believe the lie that it hasn't, which is crazy to me. So what do you think? What do you think? Uh, uh, just give me two or three, if you could think of any on top of your head, like a business that a mom could start with at home. Well, I think any business, it's like you got to solve a problem. Mm. So if you're a mom, you mm -hmm. know, you don't have a lot of time. How do you solve that problem for other moms? Ah. Do you have a product? Mm -hmm. Do you have a service that mm -hmm. helps people get their time back? Mm -hmm. Right. That's one right there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could buy somebody's business. Go to loopnet.com. Mm -hmm. Go and find a business that's already yeah, successful. Just writing this shit down, write it down. And, and go and buy a business from somebody, right? right. If you really want a business, right. that's like, whoa, you'll get right into it real quick. Um, but there's people that want to like retire yeah. and they have a really thriving business and mm -hmm. hey, they want to sell it. You can get out an SBA grant and get out mm -hmm. a loan mm -hmm. from the SBA to go and buy a business right now. You can get creative. Yes. There's more than one way to exactly like there's seller financing. There's all these things. You there's can all do. these options and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that there's opportunity. There's opportunity. Not like it was in the MLM market. But what you're saying is like, hey, solve a problem. Mm -hmm. If you have a product or a service and one of the biggest things that I that, that I hear over the, over the years with moms, I don't have enough time. Right, so, so why put another why yeah. put another business on your plate? Right, I get it. But yeah, so if you could solve the pro the the problem of time, mm -hmm. you know, with planner. Yeah. I mean, people do all, all sorts kinds of, of stuff. stuff. That's like, it's really niche. And I think yeah. the more niche you can be right now in yeah. today's market, the more people you're going to actually gonna help. Say that, right? Because people are so confused, like, ah, oh, is this for me? Is this not for me? And it's like yeah. you don't want people to do that because then they walk away. Correct. So they need to know this is what I've been thinking right. about. This is what I've been praying for. People want 
custom, mm -hmm. um, one-offs, yep. um, very, I want my name on it. People want things that are embroidered now. People want those types of boutique, they high They wanted end. that for a long time, yeah. They have, mm -hmm. they have. And the yeah. people who brought it to them early won. Mm -hmm. There's still room. But for what that, you're saying, yes. yeah, there's still room. So if you're gonna come up with a product, in my opinion, you come up with something that's really fucking cool, really chic, high end, like you talked about mm -hmm. right there. Maybe a one off of some sort, very unique, enter the market. And you might have an opportunity to blow things up and kill it. And then, secondly, you talked about time. I was mentioning time of like moms that are like, hey, I have two kids, I just don't have time to start anything. You, you, that is the problem, that you don't have time. And you're trying to fight and win time back. Right. It's the only thing in life. That is not guaranteed. It's mm -hmm. time and how long we're going to be here. So Precious. what are yeah? So what are some things that you could do that would give you time? And I don't think people are looking inward. What could what do I do around the house? Well, like the first thing is like I haven't done a dish or like cooked in a right. long time. Okay. Okay. And like laundry, I haven't done right. laundry in ten years. Love it. I won't do it. So it just piles up. You have ten years of fucking laundry. No, I have a full time. I have a full time <laughs> person, right? And but. <laughs> Let's go. But that's like I think people need permission to like hear that mm. that it's okay. It's not a badge of honor that you did your that you washed your kids' undies. Oh, like it's fine. Say that again <laughs> for the people in back. You don't get a sticker for doing your kids' if you have the resources Absolutely. to do but it. Also, too, like if you don't find that's that's the reason to start a business, Correct. right? That's the reason yeah. to go and figure out something. Yeah. So because then you do, then you're just focused on your kids, and you're not so stressed out that you have a million pieces of laundry right. to fold. Right. When I have, you know, my I have Lupita and Elliot, and okay. they work for me full time, mm -hmm. and they're a husband and wife, yep. and they love it. Like if they see me do anything at my house, mm -hmm. they come over and they say, "Stop, it's my pleasure." Like they oh. want me, they want to do it, they yeah. want to like. You know, and they're they older help. and yeah, yeah. and help. it's a blessing to them. So like your, whatever is like your thing that's really burdening you right now, mm -hmm. it could be a blessing to somebody else. Uh. And the way that I always go about like hiring people is I always say, okay, if I'm gonna get, you know, 10 hours back of my life because I hire this person mm -hmm. right now, what is my hourly rate? Mm. Do you know how to calculate your hourly rate? I don't. Okay, do so it. you decide, okay, this is how much I wanna make a year. Okay. Okay, so let's say it's a million dollars. And it's a million dollars. You want to make a million bucks? Listen up. Here we go. Maybe we should do it. I don't know. Less. No, we're doing it. <laughs> Just do a million. So the ballpark. I need a calculator. Uh, you want me to get it? Yeah. Let's do this. All right. I'm going to get this calculator out. Because okay. we're going we're to do something here with a million bucks. Because you're not Okay. So fetch. then you decide, like, how many hours can I realistically work a week? Right? Okay. okay. Here we go. So how many hours can you realistically work a week? If I'm a mom and I have two kids? Yes. Let's just say 10 to 15 hours a week. Okay, so we, let's, do, let's do 15 times 52. Okay. So that's 780. Hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So then we're going to go a million. A million. Divided by 780. Okay. So that's $1,280 uh -huh. an hour. Okay. Okay. So this is like the things that you do mm -hmm. should be making you $1,280 ah. an hour. Okay. So let's do a realistic number. Hey, I'm a mom. I just want to, oh, that's why it's my 1200 bucks. So let's just say, hey, I'm a mom. I got two kids, got the hubby. I want a side hustle. If I could bring let's home see. an extra 50 G's. 50 okay, G's so let's do 50,000. Okay. 50,000, right? I feel like that's pretty, right? If, so their hourly rate is 70 bucks. Okay. Okay. So then it's like everything that is not $70 an hour, I need to outsource to somebody else. Uh, did you catch that? Say it one more time. Everything that is not $70 an hour, I need to outsource. So that could be the laundry, you know, cleaning, whatever it is that, none of that stuff ever brought me joy. Right. So I just stopped doing it. And it brings other people joy. <sighs> Look at this, dropping knowledge. This is, this is free game. You have to pay for this game online when you sign up for a workshop, she's sure dropping do. it right here. <laughs> Let's get some more free game out of her, huh? <laughs> so it sounds like, you're, not sounds like, you're outsourcing things that don't serve you. Yeah, and then, it, like, again, it always goes back to, there's a, the, the law of circulation, okay. okay? So when I hire somebody and mm -hmm. it's blessing their lives, mm -hmm. so let's say I'm paying them $50 an hour to do something, mm -hmm. it's all coming back to me in some way. Mm -hmm. I just really, truly believe that. You're not wrong. You're right. Right, it is. Yep, it's coming 100%. back to me. So yep. it's the, I'm putting good stuff out there, and it's coming back to me multiplied because I have more energy and time <laughs> to do right. the things and I love. Right, feel better about it. Yeah. What are some things that you look for in partnering with a business partner or an employee. What oh, I've made so many bad mistakes with that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what are some things that- some What are traits, some things you should do? What are some traits uh, that you look for? Do your for? due diligence, right? yeah. 
you know, hire a PI actually. Like even, I mean, you should because like at least get a background check yes. and a credit check yeah. yep. on people yep. and just say, okay, like. But that says a lot about people, 100%. man. Are you kidding me? 100%. Are you responsible? Mm -hmm. Do you pay things on time? Mm -hmm. What are the circumstances? Why is it like this? Yep. Like we that. just went into business with somebody mm -hmm. and we did do, um, you know, everything. Yeah. We just were up front yeah. like, hey, yeah. this is just so what we do. Business. Yep. And he goes, okay, here's what you're going to find. I had a DUI 15 yeah. years ago. I'm like, okay, thank you for being up front. Like, yeah. boom, yeah. Yeah. we can move on. Yeah. And, and everything's going great with him. But you just got to like be up front about and like do, do one on me. Do your due yeah. diligence yeah. on me. Yeah. What do you need to see? Oh, uh, yeah. So it sounds like you've done some deals that didn't fucking go right. That's, right? that's usually that, how it works. And that's part of entrepreneurship. <laughs> That's part of risking. But you know what? There's a quote that says, you know, um, foolish people learn from their own mistakes, me. And mm -hmm. wise people learn from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm so passionate about my uh, podcast yeah. and like being on these. It's because it's like, like learn from us. Yeah. Like don't do the same stupid crap and lose a lot of money. And, you know, How much stuff. confidence does it take to be an entrepreneur? I think it's everything. You won't yeah. be successful if you don't have confidence. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You just won't. Do you ever flirt with the line or confidence? Or you can be a sociopath and have fake confidence. Oh my gosh. But that's, that's on There's that story. There's a few of those people that are in my life. They're getting exed They're the same too. people that you- Yeah, they are. They we already need are. to they're like, devise a plan in, in, to get I them mean, out. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah. But I, confidence. Confidence is everything. You need to have a skill. Mm -hmm. You need to have a skill. Mm -hmm. And I think the most powerful skill, mm -hmm. the most highly paid skill is sales. Yes. You gotta be able to sell. Heard a quote about sales, said this. The most successful, you want to be the most, you want to make the most money in this world, do sales. Yeah. You want to be the poorest person, live paycheck to paycheck, do sales. Oh. <laughs> yes or no? That's true. That's true. Yeah. That, that. Well, because listen, like you have to be somebody that's persistent. Yeah. So I have a sales team that works for me. Right? How was my follow up, by the way? Your follow up was, was strong. I was trying to fuck around. Somebody got a write up over, over yeah, that. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Real quick, I was like, hey, I want to have you on the. Da, 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 da. She's like, yeah, I'm totally on it. Send me an email. I sent her a nice, drawn out email. Great, confirm the time. And then I, I was like, ah, let me just text her because I like That's to confirm. Okay. Who doesn't like to confirm? So I like to confirm. I was like, hey, are we still on for tomorrow? She's like, I never got your email. I said, uh uh. I sent you an email. I got a bounce back. I said, <laughs> screenshot. Whatever it has. Screenshots in its hurt. Da, da, da. She's like, you're making me sweat. So, someone's <laughs> getting, so, I said, it ain't me. Someone's getting a little, and I basically texted her back. I said, hey, how's, how's my follow-up? I don't play around. I'm about that. Thank you. I'm yeah. glad I'm no, here. No, it's all good. So, yeah. So. yeah. But yeah. confidence is, is one thing. What's another, you know, sort of attribute that, that someone should have? Is, I mean, is, I think if you're an entrepreneur, you've got to be willing to network with yeah. people. Yes. You've got to be willing to, like, just get out of your comfort zone and talk and to get as many out there. people. Yeah. And, and let them know what you have going yeah. on. See how you can serve people. You know, and that's not actually like, I'm an outgoing person, but like, I don't actually like doing that. It's not something I enjoy mm -hmm. to go and freaking go to a networking event, yeah. go to masterminds, yeah. talk yeah. about yeah. my deals that I have going on. I just, I mean, <sighs> I would like it if everybody just came to me, but that's not the real world, you know? It, it could be. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they do, but I think like, I have enough of that, but yeah. with people just getting started mm -hmm. and you haven't built out a brand, you haven't built out a reputation, you better go out there and oh. put like, put some hours in. Talking everyone. Well, and not talking, right? But it's a little more listening, Ooh, right? And ask yeah. people, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. What do you have going on that you need help with? Correct. And not just talking. That's sort of the biggest thing I'm seeing. It's mm -hmm. like, talk, talk, talk. How important is execution? Because there's one thing to do this, but hitting deadlines, hitting numbers, saying you're going to do the thing that you said you were going to do. Mm -hmm. It takes years to build up a reputation and, mm -hmm. and one bad move like that, one bad follow through mm -hmm. to ruin it. So you better be somebody that can follow through. Or get really good at apologizing. But even that has a shelf life. Because that goes I don't far. accept apologies yeah. like that. No. Get it done. Yeah. Like, oh, right now? Okay. You'll like this story. Okay. I got a G-Wagon. Let's do it. It's, Ooh, it's my color? second one. So it was white, right? And I wanted to get it wrapped. Okay. And it's beautiful. Beautiful yeah. color, blue. It's like this, okay? It's the new color of my new branding. So I had to get a G-Wagon wrapped that way, right? So I have a driver that kind of drives me yep. around because I don't like driving. Yep. And he goes, oh. And you can text in the back and handle shit, exactly. right? Yep. So um, I'm actually on my way back from Bakersfield and he's driving me and I'm like, okay, I want to get my car wrapped. He's like, go to my guy. Mm -hmm. He's like, matter of fact, I'll pick it up for you tomorrow and take it for you, right? To Yeah, to the get guy. it done. And he does or whatever. And three weeks later, I get my G-Wagon back. And it's like, you should see it. I'll send you pictures. It's Beautiful. bad. Well, no, it's like the wrap is so bad. 
Like it's embarrassing. You like you can't get that nice of a car and then like have a bad rap job, okay? I'm dead. So I call up the guy and I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah, like either you're gonna refund me, like, yeah. and I'm gonna take it somewhere else, mm-hmm. or you're gonna need to take this wrap off. Yep. Okay, so then I'm like, I'm still gonna drive the car because yeah. I just got it. Yeah, yeah. hello. <laughs> and you haven't driven in three weeks. So I'm driving. And I'm pulling up to my kid's school, okay? This private school that they go to. And the wet, like if you know a G-Wagon, it has this wheel on the back, mm-hmm. okay? The wheel falls off in the parking lot. Yo, come and on. I go, oh my God. Like, I just look like, oh. It is fucking, it's not even a G-Wagon, it's a fucking Jeep. You just yes. put a Mercedes emblem on it. Get So it falls off, like because lo and behold, this guy like didn't put the car back together, right? And so there's a lot of problems. First time? Well, no, so apparently. Not you, him. Yeah. He said he's done it a bunch of times and all this stuff. So then he's like, I just had a baby. I can't pay you back. And I'm like, not my problem. Yeah. You're talking to the wrong <sighs> person right now. Bruh. Because like, yeah. I'm going to hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. You ha- if you have a business, mm-hmm. you better do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think I paid him like 10 grand. Just, yeah. I don't know. Put it on a credit card. Yeah. Give me my money back. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I think 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been so nice. Like, right. oh. Yeah. Well, pay me when you but can. But I'm like, no, no, this is not okay. I don't like, care that you get grand, away with 10 that. Grand. It's money. Exactly. And you offered me a service and, and, and it's I like, paid it's for not it. my problem. Yeah. That, and that sounds probably cold hearted, but like, I can't take people like, excu- no. like their excuses. Yeah. Like, get it fixed. 10 grand here, 5 grand there. It all ends up in the end of the year. You got well, all and these sorries. And I said, I'm not even going to come after you for damages. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll take care of that. Just yeah. take the wrap off. Yeah. Give me my money back. Yeah. Done. And, anyways, he's, he's not paying. So, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't decided yet. Because <sighs> the energy, it's just, it's, I know. I don't like, I just don't even like being in that energy. But it's also a, like a principle where yeah. I'm like, I can't let him get away with like bad behavior. Yeah. But then it's like those people who are committed to always being right, like mm-hmm. they suffer. And I'm like, I don't want to suffer. Yeah. Like I'm just like, you know what? I, just, I need to get that wrap taken off though. So you know somebody. Because <laughs> I'm yeah. sitting in my driveway. I haven't drove it in like over a month. I'm not going to refer you anyone because I don't want them to fuck up. I'm like, dude, that's going to be my ass. That's how people are. They won't Facts. tell me. That's what I'm I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody. I have zero network. I don't, don't ask me for it. Because I started yeah. texting around. I'm like, what lawyers do you guys know? And they're I'm like, like uh, it's cricket. So I'm like, okay. Oh, uh, So there's no good lawyers around here or something? But... I think there's some really good lawyers around here. Okay. Well, maybe we can what kind of What kind of lawyer screen. is that? Uh, I don't know, but I, I just don't even like that. Like, I just, I, I don't want to do that. I, I probably just won't. Let me go get it. Well, see, that's what Tamer did, my driver. He, I mean. I mean, they call me the hitman. But <laughs> fucking Snitch. show up. I'm like, yo, uh, you see this right here? We need to actually put them on here and be like, give, give Kayla her money back. I can do that. They had my car on their IG and then they took it off after I was. <laughs> so shady. So and shady. I haven't posted about them because I'm like, you know, I just, yeah. Anyway. Whatever. But anyways, Forget. people need to like, again, follow through. Like that's yeah. the price of doing business. Yeah. I've had people that aren't yeah. happy with my stuff. I got a refund. Yeah. That's just yeah. what you do. So execution's huge. Obviously, that guy didn't ex- execute, but that's huge in business. Mm-hmm. Confidence is one thing. Networking, getting out there and doing it, right? Yes. And then lastly, we're talking about executing, making sure that you do what you say you're going to do and get mm-hmm. it done. No mm-hmm. excuses. Get it done. Get it done. Is that how you run your business? Is that how you run your life? Yes. Everybody's on that same level. How about the kids? The kids are the are you, kids are like extremely high performers. Yeah. Because it's just that's the kind of and, that's the environment they're in. Yeah. Yeah. So my 13 year old plays like very competitive hockey. Okay. Uh, and he's so cute, but um, <laughs> he hates when I say that, but he's just like super yeah. into it, seven yeah. days a week. Yeah. I mean, this kid is like working out. He goes to a hockey school. I mean, it's he's his on life. Death. Yeah. But look at the life you've created so that they're yeah. able to get these, they have access to these resources. Not I just access, I, I'm you're so, paying I'm very for grateful. the resources. I'm very yeah, grateful. Yeah, I know you that. are. And you work your fucking ass off, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. What would your oldest say? How would your oldest describe you? Someone's like, Describe your mom. What would he say? She, he would just say she's a lot. She's a lot. <laughs> and then we move on to the second. Well, how would the second one describe you? She's drama. Love it. Yeah. And then the last one, how would she describe you? She's pretty. That's probably Aww. what he would say. He's my little baby. Aww. Yeah, he's a little sweetie pie. Aww. Yeah. So you have a lot of mommy time with them. Yes, I do. More than the average yes. working mother. But because I worked for that, you know, and it's Correct. crazy like... My mom was a single mom. My mm-hmm. dad was in jail mm-hmm. for most of my life because he did drugs mm-hmm. and got in trouble and stuff. Mm-hmm. And she worked so hard, but like we never had anything yeah. to show for it. Correct. And I was actually, I'm in the middle of yeah. writing my book right now. Right. 
And it was crazy. I had this realization that like she passed that work ethic on to me, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm like breaking like this generational curse of poverty, (sighs) right? Like because they all have something for it. I'm with you on that. I'm so with you on Mm -hmm. that. And it's up to us to break the chains and set up to the future. Absolutely. Every once in a while in a family, someone comes along in the family and changes the course of everybody's life. You're the person. I think you're the one. Because mm-hmm. I feel the same way about myself. I think there's always You're one... definitely doing things. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but I think there's always that one person in the family that chase, changes the courses of mm-hmm. the whole life. It takes your last name. It'll take Hughesman to a whole nother level. Craft a whole... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I and and you're the, you're, you are the person for your family, I feel mm-hmm. like, right? Yeah, I am. And, and you're changing it. And you're, and you're making a difference and for you yourself. And you can't take that lightly because not no. everybody is built that no. way. But it's like you were born to be yeah. you know, a curse breaker, yes. right? And like a way maker. So mm-hmm. you're going, yeah. making it happen. Are you a bit of a black sheep too, a little bit? Would you feel like? Because you. One hundred percent. Yeah. Same. Yes. Yeah. Like I've always, but I, I always feel like I don't fit in. Like mm-hmm. since I was young, I'm mm-hmm. still even now because my brain, like the way that it works, I'm constantly thinking. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> my brain goes ding, ding, yeah. ding, ideal, ding. I want to touch everything. I want to know everything about everything. I want to mm-hmm. touch everything. I want to see everything. I want to talk to everything. That's why you're good at this. Because you're yeah. thinking of all the angles. Stars. All the things. Yeah. And uh, I think it served me well so far. Yeah, it's obviously done the great for you too as well. So I want to wrap this thing up. But before I wrap this thing up, there's a clear message for me. But I, hopefully, you can get it out to Ooh, the people I that are watching. No, 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 I just think it, I think that. What are you taking home? What I take home is that you can be a mother, a successful mother. Not just that. For the, this is for the moms that like want to do a little bit more or a lot more than just be a mom. <clears> okay, so this message is for you. And so here, I brought someone on on this episode to show you that it is not only possible. But you can do it. Like, you can really fucking do this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And the only thing that's fucking holding you back is you. Yeah. And the only excuses you have are the ones that you created for yourself. And they're probably your mom or your dad or your brother or sister. It's all the dumb shit they told you when you were growing up. Mm-hmm. You have to break the mold, break the chains, and release yourself. If you need to get into something that's physical, go to boxing, go to MMA, go get on a spin bike, do something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Change the friends around you. Yeah, absolutely. You're slow because <laughs> your friends are slow. You're at the bar three that days, stuff is contagious. You're, you're at the bar three days a week because your friends are at the bar mm-hmm. three days a week. Mm-mm. You belong to seven different fantasy leagues. You know more about LeBron James stats than you know about your own. That is so wild to me. But people want to consistently say, I don't have enough time. Well, stop signing up for all these stupid ass fantasy leagues. Yeah. Why do you know everything about the the Lakers? Oh my Why gosh, I'm so glad you're like, saying this. I'm like, yes. For what? Yes. They don't know anything about you. You don't even know how much taxes come out of your check. But you're going to sit here and tell me, you know, in 1996, Michael Jordan did, you know, da 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 da. And in 2004, uh, Allen Iverson, like, who cares? Right. You don't even know your own stats. Get off your ass, learn your own stats, learn about you first, right? Yes. Get involved, yes. make things happen, get outside your comfort zone, which you said a couple of different times. This is the message that I'm getting from <clears> you, right? <throat> And you I'm can do it. The only one is stopping you is you. Yeah. Change your friends. Don't listen to your mom. Don't listen to your dad. Sometimes that, that's just what it is. Don't 100%. listen. Don't listen to your yeah. best friend. They don't know. They're still doing the same thing they're doing. Get around people that are fucking doing things. Mm-hmm. And lastly, squeeze your way in opportunities. Mm-hmm. Don't ask. Squeeze. Push. Shove. And then when you get there, you ask. <laughs> Man, I'm done, bro. Get this thing <laughs> off me, man. I'm out of here. I'm hyped up. Let's go. What are you going to go create today? I, I don't it. know, man. I got a lot going on. You know, one of the things I enjoy doing is, is cooking. Oh, what uh, kind? I, I, I learned how to cook getting, being familiar in the kitchen with my mom. Aww. Yeah, she's a great cook. My mom was old school. Six days a week she cooked. My dad would come home. There's dinner on the table. Aww. I grew up like that, which was really cool. She that took She took that pretty serious and she... She knew that my dad went to work and, and, and handled business the best way that he knew how, but she made sure he was taken care of. And I when he got that. home, there was food on the table. And once or twice a week, we would go out to go eat, right? And, and so that was sort of for like time off. So I got really f- comfortable and familiar being in the kitchen. So I enjoyed cooking everything. Aww. This Sunday, I'm going to be cooking ceviche. Oh, yummy. But I'm, we're going to be videoing it, right, Jonathan? Oh. We're going to go grocery shopping. I'm going to set up the kitchen. I'm going to dial it out. Get all the baby stuff off the counter, so you guys, that's how I live right now. Um, we're going to do a little episode of me cooking some ceviche at the house. It might I even, love might that. Even have I a feel little... like that's going to go viral. Well, I, I like doing it. My wife likes it. She's, I'm, I'm the cook in the family. You're getting some brownie points? Well, yeah, Making yeah. Making ceviche? I, I need some brownie points right now. So. <laughs> you got anything for our viewers before we take off here? Um, I don't think so. I'm 
how can how can they reach you? How can they find you on Instagram, social media? Yeah, you're so, gonna get some people on here that hey, I want to do your mastermind. I want to I want to get coached yeah, up like you. Yeah. So if you're interested in knowing all things about just investing, how to become mm. an accredited investor, mm -hmm. you know, just head over to kaylacraft.com. I have a free little thing there that will walk you through exactly how to okay. become an accredited investor. Yep. And you can follow me on Instagram at kayla.craft. Okay. And what else? Oh, my new podcast. Okay. It's called Crafted Entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah. So we just basically rebranded it from Mommy Millionaire to Crafted Entrepreneur. Okay. So there's over 400 episodes that you can go and listen to. And uh, we talk about all things. Everything. All the things. And mindset, investing, yeah. Yeah. business. And stuff. they can get coaching too on, on your site as well? Like if somebody's like, hey, I love what you're doing, I can buy a coaching program Yeah, for we have different coaching programs just depending on what, what you want to do. do. So if you want to be a real estate investor, we have a coaching program for that. Or if you're somebody that wants to really slay in your you know, online sales, uh -huh. we have a program for that. You hear that? No excuses. That's what I'm hearing right now. Tons mm -hmm. of resources for you guys. Kayla, thank you so much for being on here. I really appreciate it. And to the people that are watching and listening, thank you guys so much. I enjoyed having you on. At the end of the day, nobody cares, but I think people are gonna care about this one. This one's pretty cool, so thank you. <laughs>